Welcome back, everybody. My name is Chris Sussman, otherwise known as the Barbecue Buddha, and this week we're talking gear. And I'm going to show you one of my favorite add-ons for the Big Green Egg from a company called Kick Ash Basket. And most of you have heard of their, their Kick Ash Basket. This has been on the market for a while. The most common question I get when people get a brand new egg is what accessories they should get immediately for the egg. The very first thing I tell everybody is the kick ash basket. This basket is the end all be all of additions to the big green egg and here's why. It makes cleanup a breeze. But I'm not only here to talk to you about the kick ash basket, but I'm talking to you about their two new add-on products that now put this thing over the top. So let me get started. Once I show you everything about this wonderful device that we're gonna be using on the Big Green Egg, I'm gonna cook for you as a sample cook this beautiful Snake River Farms picanha roast. I'm gonna slice these into different steaks. We're gonna reverse sear them on the Big Green Egg Extra Large. Using this, you're asking yourself, how could you possibly use this equipment from Kick Ash Basket to reverse sear steak. Well, I'm gonna show you. We're gonna do this together. So here is the first thing. So the, the, the premise behind the kick ash basket is simple. You put this, you replace the charcoal grate at the bottom of your big green egg. You take out that cast iron charcoal grate because you don't need it anymore. You put this at the bottom of your big green egg and you put the lump charcoal in here. When you're done cooking it, any of the charcoal that's turned into ash you just pick it up. Of course, you do this after the big green egg has cooled down. I mean, you can do it when the big green egg is hot, but you need heat resistant gloves. But assuming you're going to cook the next day, you get it when it's cold. You lift this up, you shake it, all the ash falls out, and it leaves you with usable lump charcoal that you can reuse again. But it doesn't stop there. Chad has come up with a really cool thing. This is one of my things I'm most excited about. This thing called the Kick Ash Can. And it's a simple premise. Look at this. It's a can. Looks like a stainless steel can. If it's not stainless steel, Chad, you can comment below. It's got a hole right here at the bottom for your air vent on your big green egg. See that hole? And what this does is it sits at the very bottom of your big green egg. So when you shake the ash out, the ash will get caught in this can, then you lift the can out and just dump it in your garbage. It is the easiest cleanup. It's one of the things I'm most excited about and looking forward to using with this new lineup from Kick Ash. But it doesn't stop there. Look at this tool. I'll move the can out of the way for right now. This is the basket divider. Now look at this thing. This you could put in your kick ash basket, see that? And it has this little divot here that'll hook into the rails below, so you can make it adjustable. You could give yourself three quarters charcoal, half charcoal, or one third charcoal, or any iteration in between. Essentially what this does is it clicks in here, you put the charcoal on this side, light it, there's no charcoal on that side, so you've got a direct cooking zone an indirect cooking zone. So that's how we're gonna reverse sear this picanha. We're gonna roast it on the indirect side, we're gonna grill it off on the direct side, and we're all gonna see this easy setup and cleanup using the kick ash equipment. So, why don't you come outside with me while we set this up, filled up with charcoal, we'll get the setup all together, then we'll prep this steak and we'll be good to go using the kick ash equipment and this kick ash picanha. You ready with me? Come on out, people. All right, everybody. As you can see, we're out here in my Big Green Egg Extra Large. I have it totally cleaned out. There's no ash in the bottom. There's no charcoal in here. There's no charcoal grate. It's a completely empty shell ready for the kick ash equipment. So, and one other little tip for you too, because I get this asked all the time. I clean my Big Green Egg out like this before every cook. That way I don't ever have to worry about air temperature control or anything like that. If you don't have any of these vents clogged or the intake air vent clogged, temperature control is no problem. And with the addition of this kick ash equipment, it makes cleanup a snap. So the first thing we're gonna do is put in this kick ash bowl. We're gonna put that down and you wanna line up the mouth of this with the air vent below. 
So just like that, it sits right in the bottom. Now the very next thing that we do is we're gonna put that ash basket, the kick ash basket in that sits right on top. So as you can see, it's sitting right there on top. The can is below, the basket is right there. Now we're gonna take this divider, the kick ash divider, and I'm gonna divide it right along the middle. So I've got that divider just basically down the middle, if you could see. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fill up this side with charcoal. I'm gonna leave this side no charcoal. This will be my indirect side, this will be my direct side, and we will get the steaks roasting here and finishing them off there. So that's it. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna light the charcoal and we're gonna get this picanha on. So stay tuned, people, here we go. So as you can see, people, I've got the divider right here. That's gonna be the indirect side. That's the direct side. I have the charcoals lit in two locations so I can get a nice hot burn going with this coal. We're gonna let that burn for about 10, 15 minutes until the temperature comes up. And then I'm gonna come back out here and put the steaks on, so stay tuned. All right, everybody. So. While the big green egg is preheating with that two zone setup using the kick ash basket and new kick ash divider, we're gonna trim up this picanha from Snake River Farms. Snake River Farms is an American Wagyu steak company out of Idaho, and they make the best American crossbred with Japanese Wagyu bull beef on the market. If you want a steak that eats like Wagyu, but the best steak that America has to offer, get yourself a Snake River Farms. This is a two and a half pound picanha. There's a little bit of silver skin and fat on this side. We're gonna leave the fat cap on. We're gonna trim this into steaks. All right, next thing I wanna do is I'm gonna keep this fat cap intact. That's what you're used to when you're eating picanha at the Brazilian steak houses, the churrascarias. I probably mispronounced that. If I did, forgive me, lo siento for my Latino audience. But here we go. We're gonna cut this in about one and a half inch steaks. And that's what we've got. Beautiful, nice top sirloin roast. You're used to seeing it in the Brazilian steak houses cut like that or shaped on the skewer. All right, so now we're gonna season up these steaks. Simple seasoning that I'm gonna do. We're gonna let the meat do the talking, but I'm using just a little bit of hot sauce as a binder. Really, you could use anything, wet, olive oil, hot sauce. You just basically wanna create a small layer of liquid and or viscosity to the outside of your meat in order to hold that rub in place. Olive oil also works well. I like using hot sauce because it gives you a little added extra kick of pepper. That is always a delicious thing when you're eating steak like this. I'm using Dizzy Pig Cow Lick. It's my favorite steak rub. There you go. Now let's go out and check on the big green egg. That indirect zone and direct zone should be perfect and ready. We're gonna get these steaks on. We're gonna let them roast on the indirect side for a little bit, and then we're gonna finish them off hot on the direct side so you can get that beautiful sear. So come on out, let's check out that kick ash setup. All right, so as you can see, the coals are nice and lit. I'm gonna go ahead and close the big green egg down right now, let her come up to temp. We're looking for a target temp of around 300 degrees before we put this picanha in. All right, everybody, so it's been a few minutes. You now see that we're at 300 degrees. I've got the top vent closed about three quarters of the way. I've got the bottom vent closed about three quarters of the way. So stay tuned and we'll get this steak on right now. All right, people, so let's go ahead and get these steaks on. We're gonna put these on the indirect side. Remember, as we talked about earlier, And there you go. As you can see, we're on the indirect side. The kick ash basket is down below. The divider is in place. 
We've got the hot coals here. We've got no coals there. We're going to let these roast for a little bit until they come up to about 115 internal. Then we'll finish them off on the hot side. So stay tuned, people. Here we go. All right, everybody. It's been about 10 minutes. We're still at 300 degrees. Let's take a temp on these steaks and see where we're at. We're at about 80 degrees on these steaks, so it's just perfect. Now, one thing you want to notice is that the heat is coming from this side. So this side of the steak is getting a little bit more attention from the heat than this side. So what I like to do is flip them about 10 minutes in and flip them on the other side. So when you're doing a two zone cook, you always want to be conscious about where the heat is coming from and that way you can always manage the impact it's having to the proteins that are cooking on your grill. So there you go. I think we probably got about another 10 minutes before we're gonna pull these and, and get them cooked up on the direct side. Kick Ash Basket is doing its thing. Look at that, that looks awesome. Stay tuned. Let's check these beautiful picanha steaks. And there we go. We're a little high, about 120. One little low but close and that one is just perfect so you know it's like Goldilocks and the three bears so let's take these off we're gonna let them rest 10 minutes so in the meantime in order to help with the searing I'm gonna open the top vent all the way and I'm gonna open the bottom vent all the way and that is gonna allow us to get that direct side up to a nice screaming hot temp to finish off these steaks. I expect that to be about 500 degrees when we get back. Stay tuned. All right, people, just like I promised, a few minutes later, we're at 500 degrees. Look at that. This big green egg is screaming hot. We're gonna go ahead and open her up. Look at that. That's the direct side. You can see all those coals are screaming hot. It really just takes a minute or two to cook these steaks. So let's get them on. Let's see how this looks after we sear them off on this direct side. Kick ash basket divider is already proving its worth. Two zone grilling is where it's at. Let's let these go for just a minute. And just like that, kick ash basket and divider, kick ash picanha. All right, everybody, we've got a little bit left to do. After my big green egg cools down, I'm gonna show you how I use the kick ash basket and the kick ash bucket to clean up the ash. But you just saw how I cooked this beautiful picanha from Snake River Farms, these great steaks using the kick ash divider for a true two zone setup. That thing couldn't have been any easier. It is the power of two zone grilling at its finest and kick ash really put out a great product. I can't recommend this highly enough. So without further ado, let's move a little bit of these teeny weeny steaks to the side. Let's take a look at this gorgeous picanha. Look at that fat cap. Dizzy pig cow lick, smells so good. Let's slice it in the middle and see how this reverse sear did its job. Look at that. Perfect end-to-end -end pink. That is a gorgeous steak, my friends. What we're going to do here is slice this bad boy, and you're going to get the Buddha bite in all of its glory. All right, everybody, it's the next day. We're gonna go in because the big green egg is now cooled off. I'm gonna be able to get that kick ash basket out of my big green egg extra large and show you by design 
how this whole thing works and why you will be happy with this addition to your setup because it makes cleanup a snap. So let's open this up, take out the grilling grate. If you take a look inside here, you can see that this charcoal, there's still plenty of usable lump left over, right? So what we're gonna do is get rid of that ash. And here's how you do it. Here's the kick ash basket in action. You shake it, all that, all that loose ash falls to the bottom, and now you can reuse this lump charcoal. But it doesn't end there. If you wanna ensure your environment is clean, take all that ash that fell down. Here's all that ash from the cook. And you take out the kick ash can, and we're gonna pour the ashes out in my garbage can. And just like that, ladies and gentlemen, we have a brand new clean environment for another two zone grilling experience later today. That's how it's done. That's how the kick ash basket works. That's its benefit. That's why I love this thing. You ask me what is the best add-on for the Big Green Egg for brand new Big Green Egg owners. It's a kick ash basket with their divider and their can. Thanks everybody for watching. This is one of my favorite things to do is give you product reviews and setup information for your Big Green Egg. I love teaching all of you. If you like what you saw today, please hit the subscribe button right here. Leave me a comment down below. Until we meet again, or until we eat again, cook something good for me. Thanks, everybody.